Hello, Matt here. Today we are going to be talking about a verse on suffering, which there's a lot of verses on suffering. And this is a picture of our Lord on the cross with the scroll up top, at the crown of thorns, and the other two thieves next to him. The three crosses on Golgotha. And this was done by my son Wyatt when he was four years old. I've got about 200 of these. <clears throat> of various various pictures of Jesus suffering for us. It's pretty powerful. I wanted to share that today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about suffering today. Yesterday we read 2 Thessalonians 1 through 4. And today, uh, just I'm going to reread 4 and then we're going to get into 5. I think we might only do 5 today. Uh, at 2 Thessalonians 4, Paul says, Therefore we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. So here's Paul, uh, who was no stranger to suffering, shipwrecked, beaten, constantly stoned, died, went to heaven, came back, uh, imprisoned over and over and over. Uh, and he's boasting about the Thessalonians' faith, steadfast faith in their afflictions. That tells me that the afflictions that they were enduring were probably more than the average afflictions of a new church, which are horrible and terrible anyways. Uh, new churches, especially back then, were always under attack. They still are today. Sometimes it might be more, it might be more a subversive attack or a, it might not be as noticeable, which may even be more dangerous. I don't know. Uh, seems like as soon as a church is set up, the enemy's right there to tear it down, be, be, be it uh, physical affliction and persecution or false teaching. We see that a lot too, and sometimes it comes from within the church. The wheat and the tares grow together, uh, or it could be from outside the church. A frontal attack, a attack from the, from the rear, getting flanked from the side from the enemy. But here we see Paul boasting about these guys and, and gals, these ladies and gentlemen. Because they were they were uh, they were enduring all this with faith, enduring all this persecution with faith, and then check out what he says in verse five. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God. This is a powerful statement. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God. What is evidence? Well, it's evidence of the righteous judgment of God that they still have faith in the midst of the affliction and persecution. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. You may be considered worthy. To suffer is to be considered worthy. To suffer is a good thing uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it tells us that we are on the enemy's radar screen if we're suffering, if we're if we're enduring affliction, uh, because now we're we're a threat to him. Two, it tells us that we're on the same path as Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ suffered, and Jesus Christ promised his disciples they will suffer. That's why this prosperity gospel is so oh, so horrible. It's so offensive to God. It's just so silly. And people don't see it. And they eat it up. It's just so terrible. Jesus Christ promised in, in John 16, 33, In this world, there will be suffering. You will suffer tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. They, If they hate you, know that they hated me first. The servant is not greater than his master. Uh, <clears throat> Paul says in 1 Timothy three twelve, I believe, that all who desire to live God in Christ Jesus will suffer affliction. Paul suffered a lot of affliction. So what this is saying here is if you're suffering for Jesus Christ, be it physical persecution, like we don't feel here in America, we don't understand it like they do in China or Iran or Iraq or these other countries, India. Um, but we, you know, we, we suffer some persecution maybe uh, from more verbal, more the way people treat us, uh, perhaps spiritually, uh, you know, we go through the desert, God allows that, but it's all for His glory, and He allows it for His glory, and it's for our good, <clears throat> and that's the thing that, that sometimes it's hard 
it's hard to keep your eyes on the fact that this is for our good when you're in the middle of it. That's why we fellowship. That's why we read the Word. That's why we get encouraged by these kinds of statements that Paul says, you are worthy to be suffered. It is, it's a, talked about a paradigm shift, to be considered worthy to suffer. Let's see what Paul says. I'm going to read a couple verses. Colossians 1.24, 1 Peter 5, 5 through 10, and maybe that's all. Maybe we'll do Romans 5, 3 through 5. But these are verses God really opened up to me on suffering. In, in Colossians 1.24, Paul says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Paul says he fills up in his flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. Does that mean Christ was lacking something? Does that mean Christ didn't finish everything? No, not at all. What it means is when... This is might even sound sophomoreish, but if you really think about when people attack us, when people persecute us for being Christians, if you boil it all down, it's just the enemy, it's just the devil in them persecuting the Christ in us. Forget us, forget them. It's a spiritual battle, Ephesians 6. Um, and it's basically, here's the deal, when Jesus Christ was on, was on earth, he allowed Satan and his minions to cause him grief. We see this in the Garden of Gethsemane. We see it when he's being tempted. Uh, and uh, he allowed it. And they rejoiced in, in trying to persecute him. You know, we don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they were thinking it was actually going to work. But after he defeated death, praise God, and was resurrected, hallelujah, uh, the enemy still wants to persecute Jesus. But they can't. So what's the next best thing? Who do they come after? You and me. Uh, that's who the devil comes after. He comes after us. He comes after the followers of Christ. So in that regard, we are worthy. We are worthy. To con We are considered worthy of the kingdom of God. We're considered worthy if we su suffer affliction. It's a beautiful thing. Very beautiful thing. And uh, it's for our good because it boils out all the garbage in us it makes us focus, be eternally minded. It makes us take our eyes off us. And uh, we also, after you go through suffering, you're also very much focused on other people that are suffering. You find yourself praying for other people. You find yourself being more humble. You find yourself being more giving, more caring, more loving. Mm, more like Jesus. Huh. wonder if that was planned. Of course. Yes. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to suffer. Uh, I'm running out of time here. Gonna do one more here. First uh, Peter 5:10. I just love this. He says, "Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares about you." Be sober. We saw that in First Thessalonians. He's coming back. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Steadfast in faith, just like they were. Steadfast in faith. Same language. Beautiful knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Other people are experiencing it too. Be encouraged. You're not alone. Verse 10. This is the beautiful part, guys. But may the God of grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, he knows about it. He's allowing it. It's for your good. It's for his glory. After you suffered a while, what's he going to do? He's going to perfect you. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. In Jesus' name. That's why suffering is good. To Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God allows suffering. If you're suffering, it's a good thing. You're worthy. You've been found worthy by Jesus Christ to, to, to go on the same path. The world will tell you, oh, you're losing everything. What about this? What about that? And you get this eternal mindset where you, you finally see it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. Uh, if you're suffering, keep going. Keep getting closer to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Him. Be eternally minded. If you don't know what this is about, if this seems like madness to you, get born again. Ask Jesus Christ to save you. Ask Him to forgive your sins. Ask Him to change your heart. Ask Him to open your mind. 
Ask Him to reveal Himself to you. In Jesus' name, have a good weekend. Peace.